Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to First Baptist of Oka. These are, of course, uh, strange times in that uh, people are actually sitting in the front row uh, here. So <laughs> we're going to uh, start with a call to worship and uh, a call to praise the Lord. On the day that uh, Jesus uh, came into the temple, he saw what was going on, he was disturbed, and he reminded the people that this, his place, the house of the Lord, was to be a house of prayer for all people. My house will be called a house of prayer for all people. And then in response to the children who are praising him and singing Hosanna to him, and people were asking him about that because they felt it was inappropriate that he would be receiving such acclaim and, and worship. And he replied to them, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. As we gather here this morning, God has ordained that we would praise his name and declare his salvation. So I invite you to join. We're about ready to sing, but I would also uh, like to open us in a word of prayer. Pastor Bill uh, has already prayed uh, before those uh, before going uh, live for those of you who are watching at home. But I, let's stand and open and declare this uh, opportunity to pray to the Lord this morning. Our Heavenly Father... We are coming together as your people in the sanctuary and in the parking lot and other parts of the building and from the homes where we are gathered this morning to give to you our lives, to pray to you, to seek you, Lord, to call out to you. We ask, Lord, that you would orient our hearts to give praise and worship to your name this morning, that you would be pleased by what you hear and what you see in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory. King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This, this is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is 
La 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 
together and so I invite you to turn in your copy of God's Word to Psalm 8. This is a, the psalm actually that Jesus is quoting from that we started out our service with. Psalm 8. So whether you're at home, in the parking lot, uh, in our, our room we get to read scripture together. Uh, we get to focus and direct our hearts uh, to hear what God has to say. Uh, to us this morning. Psalm 8, uh, this is uh, for the director of music, a Psalm of David, and it reads, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, and from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your he the heavens, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set into place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We have an incredibly awesome and majestic God, and he invites us to come to him in prayer. So let's do that right now. Our Heavenly Father, our Father, who has made us be your children, you have remade us through your Son. You have redeemed us from sin, from the power of death. And we are here as your children who you have created and recreated to offer our praise to you, declare your holiness and your greatness, your majesty that is displayed throughout all the earth. And you're displaying it to us through your word and by your spirit, even within our hearts, Lord. We ask that as we come to you, you would continue to change and transform us, Lord, in the image which we have been created, in your image and in the image of your Son, Jesus, that we would be like Christ. We display him in all areas of life. Here this morning as we sing to you and pray to you, and this afternoon as we eat lunch with our families, and tomorrow as we go and are surrounded by our co-workers and others in our community, that the likeness of Christ, your image, would be increasingly clear in our lives. Lord, we pray for our church that likewise we would reflect your image being the body of Christ. We pray for our country, the church in our country. Lord, we are divided now more than ever, or at least in a long time in the history of our country, politically, and racially, at all, so many levels, Lord, there is conflict and strife and disagreement. Lord, we know the answer isn't in our politics or our politicians. It isn't in the enforcement of laws or all of those things, Lord. It's only 
and the transformation of hearts that you accomplish, Lord. And so we lay before you our own sins and confess our need for your righteousness, for you to restore and renew our hearts, Lord, to be faithful to Christ, to be obedient to him, uh, to trust him in all aspects of our lives, to put off that which is not of you, that which is of the flesh and our own sinful desire, Lord, to pursue holiness, goodness, and kindness, and love. We ask that this would be something that you would be at work throughout our land and throughout your world, Lord, that the name of Jesus would be exalted. We ask in his name. Amen. Before we sing uh, one more song and Pastor Bill comes up this morning, I want to make a, a quick announcement. On Thursday, I sent out an email uh, about uh, uh, small groups, summer fellowship groups this uh, summer that uh, we're proposing for the purpose of reading scripture together, uh, for encouraging one another, and for prayer. And uh, first, I, I want to communicate that if I have, in my, um, if I have in that email communicated to you that these are groups that you should be a part of in order to be in obedience to Christ, uh, I have been in error if I have communicated that, and I ask uh, for your forgiveness. Uh, we do not operate on the basis of guilt or compulsion, but on uh, love of Christ and what he has uh, put in our hearts uh, desire to do, um, and that we should not operate on any other basis than uh, in faithfulness and obedience uh, to Christ. Uh, having said that and recognized that, um, I want to be clear that our church cannot ignore Christ's command to uh, gather together, and this is an expression of that, and to pray together and to read scripture together and to encourage one another. Uh, we are to be devoted to those things. And if those uh, small groups uh, would be helpful to us in accomplishing that, uh, that I would like to encourage in fact, I guess let me be a little bit more specific for some things about where I see our church and the need for us to commit and devote ourselves to pray and to fellowship together. For the last two and a half months, we have been sequestered, all right? We've been kind of on our own, out of touch other than by long distance. And I don't know about you, but for me, I'm actually pretty content in that, <laughs> I can do that just fine, really, but that's not good for me. I know it's not good for me to, to just be content with my own company and be very at ease without interacting with others other than we need better programs, better ministries. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. But I do know we need God's power and his work in our church. Uh, this summer, it's going to be different. We can't have VBS uh, like we have had before. I don't think that's going to be uh, easier for us to reach out in our community. We need prayer uh, for the ministries of our church. We've already noted, we, we know our country is extremely polarized. It is very, we've seen it again this week, how far apart we are. It's not going to be fixed by re-electing our current president or electing a new president. That's not going to fix it. We know that churches are in decline, not just ours. We know this, and that uh, unbelief is increasing. So I, I guess I see this as a time for us to really consider how to devote ourselves to God's word and to prayer. And, and to building up and equipping one another, uh, however that works out in our lives. That we cannot ignore. Uh, there are different ways in that which is that, that express that, but to that uh, we must be faithful 
uh, to Christ, and I encourage you uh, to consider how uh, he uh, is calling us uh, to be participating in his work. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins in grace to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often Good morning. good morning it is good to be in the house of the lord together amen, amen. so um death defying acts um there are quite a few question are you afraid to die there evidently there are a lot of people who aren't uh, we've got uh philippe petit who in 74 walked between the uh, world trade center's twin towers um You've got Nick Walenda, who walked across Niagara Falls, though his great-grandfather died uh, in Puerto Rico trying to walk on a high wire. Guy was very, very talented. A stray gust of wind happened to take him <laughs> by accident, and he perished, right? Death-defying is, is a, realistic, a realistic thing. This guy changing flights in mid-flight... He had a parachute. This guy from 25,000 feet decides he doesn't need a parachute. That's uh, Luke Akins. He jumps out with three other guys who all have parachutes. They're smarter than he is. <laughs> That's what he can see. 
He has a GPS, an oxygen tank, and um, I forget what else. But yeah, he, uh, he gets to... This is a whole lot different than the SpaceX. <laughs> yeah, he jumps into a net. He survives. I, I'll show you. He, he's very happy when he's down. Um, he had jumped 18,000 times with a parachute. Right? See? He's alive. <laughs> death defying. But that sometimes ends in death. And, and the question is, um, as we think about live or die, Live or die. What does is, what is Scripture tell us about living, dying? We're going to look at Philippians chapter 1, the last part this morning. You can turn there, but let's pray first. Father God, we ask that You would give us wisdom and insight. Life and death. We, we use that phrase as uh, one of the ultimate things. Look, this is a matter of life and death. And Lord, this is a matter of life and death. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us as we we seek to have your wisdom and get your understanding of Scripture. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. So, I'm assuming that for most of you, with the coronavirus going on, you've thought about death a little bit more. Because it's all over the news, how many people are infected, how many people died. Um, And in some ways, that's why I like funerals. Not just because nobody can talk back at you, but um, because it's a matter of impact. You only have so long on this earth, and then you too will die. We should realize that this world's only temporary. We should realize that many people are dying and going into a Christless eternity. They will spend the rest of their time suffering in hell for their sin. Those should be things that just hit us. Right? One of the things that Kathy's had the opportunity to do um, with the pandemic is, is that she's redone her wall. Okay? and uh, Family theme and lots of family pictures. and um, Not one of the pictures that's actually on the wall. Uh, Isaac, next slide. Uh, is... Uh, is a picture of my our daughter Deb, all right? And you know, I, I found myself thinking through this even this week. Uh, we lost Deb, right? We we say that now we know what we mean, but there's probably a much better way to say that. I didn't lose my daughter. I know exactly where she is, right? I know she placed her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And because of that, and only because of that, because she was a sinner. (laughs) She'd tell you too, but I'll tell you, she was a sinner. Um, (laughs) One week, one week, I I was pretty sure I'd caught her in a lie. (sighs) But my daughter at one point was intending to be a lawyer. Okay? And she was good at it. I could not get her to admit that she had lied. And so I decided, fine, God will take care of this much better than I will. We're walking home <laughs> after a Sunday sermon. And <laughs> we're walking home, and I hear this, Dad, I lied. <laughs> like, wow, the Spirit of God. <laughs> we weren't talking about lying in church that morning, but boy, oh boy. She knew she was a sinner. She knew just like the rest of us should know. If we die without Christ, we, we deserve to go to hell. But, but if we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, He takes the punishment for our sin and we can live with Him forever. So we don't lose those who know Christ. Right? But, but death is a very challenging thing. All right? Philippians chapter 1, second part of the chapter, Paul is dealing with this. Right? Um, we, we actually read this verse last week, but let me just read it again. I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. The things that have happened to me, and what he's talking about is the fact that he's in prison, house arrest, and I thought of it this morning, Princess Bride applies yet again. Good night, Wesley. Most likely I'll kill you in the morning. 
Right? That is what Paul lived with. Right? He's under a sentence of death. The very well emperor could kill him at any point. He's under house arrest. And he, he's, he's saying, look, I'm in house arrest. This is it. This is, this is the best thing. Because God's using this. And so do we look at the, <laughs> this, that prison is the best path, Psalm 32 there. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. Do we think quarantine's the best? Do we think unemployment's the best? Do we think sickness is the best? Do we think death is the best? Do we? I'll be honest, yes. I, I struggle with that as well. I think, well, God, I could surely come up with a better plan than this. All right, when I'm honest. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Paul says, look, it, it, here's another impact. One, these guys who get chained to me for hours on end have nowhere to go. And so I just keep telling them the gospel. The other believers hear and realize that, wow, God has Paul in prison for the best. I will be bold to speak as well. Oh, that we would see that as well. We need to be bold, right, to speak. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. So, um, I went to school in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where I met my lovely wife. Um, and among other amazing things that happened there was we had the opportunity to sit under Wayne Barber and his ministry of teaching and preaching. And uh, one week he really surprised me as he explained how he was an unsaved pastor for a number of years. And he actually had people who came to know Christ because he preached the gospel even though he had not yet accepted it. And then the Spirit of God worked in his heart and he accepted Christ as Savior. Right, so don't tell me that you can be sitting here just because you're sitting here, you're saved, because I can guarantee you that's no guarantee. You can be a pastor and not be saved. It's your response to the Word of God. And Paul says, look, some people aren't even preaching it right, but if they get the truth right, the truth is still powerful and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing. Right? I find this amazing. Paul says, and in this I rejoice. Yes, and will rejoice. I am excited. I, I'm not necessarily happy. I'm pretty sure chains hurt. Right? I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't convenient. I'm pretty sure that there was other junk going on. But he chooses joy. I choose joy because I understand that God's in charge and He has the best. But look at this. I rejoice in this and I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now as Paul's saying, look, I know that I'm getting out of here. Uh, he's actually in prison for quite a while. Uh, the word there could mean that, but most likely means I know that my salvation, my ultimate deliverance, is secure. <laughs> right? And I, I know that I'll stay faithful, and I know that I will do what pleases God because you're praying for me. That's what he says. Your prayer. And the supply of the Holy Spirit working in me to guide and direct me, to convict me of sin, to, 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 to make me bold in my witness, that's going to turn out to, for my salvation. For my appearing before God. 
uh, Friday night, we did Secret Church. It was delayed, <laughs> but we had Secret Church here. And one of the things that impacted me yet again was the need to pray more, better, for each other, for our church, for our community. This passage reminds us that our prayers matter, that we need to pray more for our missionaries. We need to pray more for those who are preparing, like Eli and Sadie. We need to pray more for unreached people groups because there are people around the world, nations, tribes around the world who have not yet heard. And frankly, we need to pray that those who are here in our community who have the opportunity to hear, who if we turn up the, the sound system louder are just simply going to tune it out more, but they, they don't know. Not because they couldn't, but because they choose. Right? We need to pray because our prayers are effective. God, God tells us that. Paul reminds us here. We need to pray for courage, right? Verse 20, According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. In nothing I'll be ashamed, but with all boldness. Uh, the NIV translates that sufficient courage. All right? Um, maybe, maybe it's just me. All right? but I know I've come into opportunities where God has placed me and that all I have to do is say the next word and it will open up a, a witnessing opportunity. And I will admit that I have shrunk back. Because I know and yet I'm afraid. I don't have sufficient courage. I don't have the boldness that I should have. And what is the worst that could happen to me? So I, I'll be honest. I, <laughs> as we moved towards this whole gathering together, right, I, I, I seriously considered, so would I, would I gather together if I knew that the police were going to knock on the door or pound on the door? and come in and arrest everybody. And you know who goes to prison first in those cases? The pastor. The pastor gets to go to prison first. So I'm, I'm seriously considering. How many prison epistles could I write? <laughs> um, would I, what would I do? <laughs> do I have the courage? Right? Pray for courage. Pray for sufficient boldness to, to answer, to stand, to do, to speak the Word of God. Why? Because we have people who are lost and dying and going to hell. And God desires for us to share with them the only message that will, will change their minds. Paul then writes this verse that I'm sure everybody is familiar with. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Can we say it together? For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Okay, but that, see, that's very different than saying, oh, we lost death. We gain by death. Right? Do, do you stop and consider it? And I realize, you know, I realize that most of you at least have passingly thought through some of you are looking forward to dying. When Barb was, Kraft was still um, very coherent, she, she seemed to know who I was every time I went in, but when she was very coherent, she, she would tell me often, Florence told me a number of times, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I don't know why God's waiting. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I want to, I want to go to the other side. I, I want to be with, I want to leave this. 
and go. Right? And again, back to Chattanooga, I remember specifically praying, oh God, please don't come before I get married. Because I really love this woman and I really like to experience married life before. We're out of here, right? The more I look back on that, the more stupid I realize that is, right? Like, marriage is better than heaven? Well, mine is. I don't know about yours. But, um, I thought I better, yeah, I thought I better, better, I thought, I wasn't going the wrong direction here. Lunch is just not going to be as fun as I think. <laughs> mm. Right. Marriage is good, right? But truthfully, I look forward more to heaven. Because I know Deb's there. And I want you to understand, I'm about to tell you that that is wrong. Look. And what heaven is spoken about, right? 1 Corinthians 2.9. It's written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him. The Bible tells us that we can't even imagine how great heaven is. Second Peter talks about, according to this promise, we're waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. I'm looking forward to that. Right? That, that there is no injustice. Everything happens like it should. First Peter chapter 1. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. My weed whacker broke again this weekend. You, if you know of an unfading, unperishable weed whacker, I'd really love to know about. Okay? There is so much stuff that breaks. And what we have to look forward in heaven is things that do not. Kept in heaven for you. Rejoice and be glad, Matthew 5. For your reward is great in heaven, so they, for, so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Right? We have so much to look forward to. God is going to reward us. And it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. It's described. Um, we often look to Revelation 21. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. There shall be no mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And that is fantastic. We look forward to all those things, but I'm here to tell you that if that's what you're looking forward to the most, if that's what you think to die is gain, that the most is I get to see my loved ones, that I get my reward, that things don't break, that then you've missed it. You have missed it because... Scripture spends more time talking about the fact that when we get to heaven, we are in God's presence. God's presence. Right? For eternity. Psalm 1611, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He'll let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go and prepare a place for you. I go and prepare a place for you so that I can come again. I'll take you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Revelation 21, before it talks about the no more tears, says this. I saw the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be His people. And God Himself will be with them as their God. If your heart is not most looking forward to death because you enter into the presence of God, into the presence of Christ, into the very presence of the Holy Spirit, you need to check your heart. I need to check my heart. Right? Because the most important thing is seeing the face of my Savior. Now, I'm sure that you can probably understand Paul has thought through this and he's in the middle of this and he's saying look I've got this choice to make all right and so 
I'd like to help us kind of think through choice. I need a volunteer. Well, I was kind of hoping for a kid, seeing it's kid's corner. I, I, go ahead, Matt, Micah. All right. I'll put mine on, too, since we will not be socially distant. Although, if you stay on that side and I stay over here, maybe, it's just harder to get the camera on that. All right, so, Micah, I have to breathe differently. <laughs> All right, that's better, okay. Uh, Micah, I have three options for you. I'm, I'm going to ask you to make a choice, okay. I have this envelope, all right. I have this box, Joy, very appropriate for Philippians. I did not spend all night making this. Mrs. McFeeders found it for me. <laughs> Wonderful woman that she is. I have this bigger box, Micah. Which one, right now, just you know, right off the top of your head, which one, which one are you thinking? The Joy. Choosing joy is a great thing. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? How could you make a better choice? Choosing God. Oh, well, yeah, okay. I'll give you that one. When in doubt, choose Jesus. That's, that's always a good Sunday school answer. Um, that's actually a great Sunday school answer. Um, I've done it myself several times. Um, <laughs> I think there's a better way, though, for you to know which one you should choose. How, how, how could you know the best outcome? Helping from the studio audiences! <laughs> Phone a friend! That's, that's, a good that's a good way. <laughs> that's okay. Um, they say you could open them up. I'm going to tell you, you can't do that. There's another way. Shake it. You got to be careful with this one. It's really flippy. and it'll... It's flippy joy. Okay, hold it from the side. Yeah. Shaking envelopes doesn't usually help. All right, so now you got a better choice, right? What are you going to go with? Oh, now you're going to go with the big one. How come? Oh, you don't get to open it yet. <laughs> I'm not done with the plate. Here's the Here's the biggest, made the most noise. Made the most noise. That's a, that's a good, good option. As a matter of fact, I, I will tell you that there is money in the envelope. No, because he couldn't shake it. <laughs> good thought, though. But that does give you a clue here. Ah, I know what's in every box, every envelope. So this is the best one. You want to take it and open it, show them what's inside. Oh, that's not all that's in there. Some pens, that's right. So, Micah, here's what you gave up. Behind door number one was candy. So, I'm asking, which, which do you think was better? Candy. The candy was better? Yeah, it's not a lot of candy, but there is candy. Even over the money? Even over the money? There's only a dollar in there. Mike, I'm telling you that this is the best box. This was the best choice. Now you can use these to go encourage people. Okay. Right. I will do that. And, and, and it looks like, okay, how many of you think you got ripped off? How many of you would have made a different? Yeah. Do you think you got the best choice now? 
Uh, the candy, I, I think you can buy enough candy to cover. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. You can, you, can, you can keep that and you can sit down. Thank you. <laughs> so here's my point, here's my point, which we've made a couple of times, right? God knows best. Why? Because he's packed the boxes. And, and you can even, after you open it, you're thinking, flour and pencils. <laughs> really sure about this, right? Because you don't always see immediately what all that God has packaged for you. Right? Colossians tells us this. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. <laughs> Second slide there. I think I can't see it. Well, Turn the other way. Uh, nope, back to the... There you go. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Right? So we need to pray, not only for one another, but we need to pray so that we would understand what God's will is and we would trust Him. That even with what may not immediately appear to be the very best, that it is the very best. So Paul is still in this spot. Verse 22, If I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart. Right? I want to get to heaven. It sure beats prison. And be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And I realize that I could go, but I realize that God may have purpose for me here. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again, that God would answer the request that you would get, that I would be released and I'd be able to be with you and I'd be able to encourage you that God answers prayer and that He's powerful and that sometimes the best possible place to be is prison. Why? Because truthfully, that's where Paul makes his greatest impact on us. We have the prison epistles, which wouldn't have been written. If Paul wasn't in prison. The point is this. Scripture talks about the fact that I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. We need to die to live. We need to die to our own self. And I, I hate it when God keeps working these things over in my life. Somebody else pick a sermon and preach for a week, okay? Because for the last two weeks, I, I really struggle with this, that, that I need to to sacrifice me, my wants and my likes and my desires for the good of the church, for the good of others, to serve, right? So, <laughs> verse 27, only let your conduct be worthy of the Gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. So, if you remember, just a couple screens ago, we talked, we read Colossians where Paul talks about walk worthy, and he often uses that phrase, walk worthy. Here he says, conduct yourselves, and it's a different word that he only uses this one time. And uh, it's poly something, um, from which we get politics, because the word itself has to do with um, living as a citizen be one short way to do it. Live as a good citizen. Which particularly caught my attention because of where we were in secret church. Um, 
Paul says, I want you to live as a good citizen. Now, realize that he's writing to the Philippians. The Philippian area, the Philippi is a, uh, a free part, but they're very devoted to emperor. And actually, emperor worship was probably the most popular worship at that time in that city. And so good citizens worshipped the emperor. And Paul is making the, the, the statement here, but you're not citizens of Rome. You are citizens of heaven. And you need to walk worthy of that. So, should the Lord Jesus Christ come within the next 10 minutes, and I'm good with that, then we're all good, right? Those of us who know Christ, we're up and we're ready and we're gone. And perhaps God strikes us all dead which he could do simply and easily. And I'm good with that, right? Because to live, to die is, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Try not to mess up the quote. But, what if he chooses for us to live? Then our responsibility is to live in a conduct worthy Knowing, knowing that heaven's beyond. That there is nothing they can do that can take that away. Why would you not be bold to speak the name of Christ? What's the worst they can do to you? They could torture you, yes. And many of our brothers and sisters around the world are tortured for Jesus Christ. Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. That live or die, we're yours. Help us to live unto Christ. Conduct ourselves worthy in a manner. Help us to think through what that means. Lord God, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you will accomplish in and through us. In Christ's name, amen. A couple of things to bring to your attention before we carefully dismiss with our masks upon us and socially distant. Pastor Brandon and Kathy and I will be up here. If you need to talk, would like to talk, you're more than welcome to come up here. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to stay and socialize in here. Um, otherwise than that, if you would, put your mask on and, and head out and not congregate in the hallways or in the, the uh, parking lot, uh, that would probably be our best witness. Right? If you haven't been getting our emails, please make sure that you let us know so we can get that to you because we send out a whole lot of information that way. Um, Pastor Brand is still looking for those who'd like to share their testimony uh, on video. We have This will be the last week that we have the full schedule of prayer meetings uh, due to the fact that we're starting up the summer fellowship groups and there will be pra- they will be prayer meetings. They will be prayer meetings uh, as well. So um, the summer fellowship groups, uh, if uh, you'd like more information, talk to Pastor Brandon or myself about that. Uh, Awana is finishing up. Uh, Next Sunday will be the last Sunday to say sections uh, so that we can uh, celebrate uh, the winner and so we can also celebrate those who have um, uh, finished their books. All right. Uh, Dads are leading Sunday school. And uh, youth group is meeting tonight at 6, and those are the announcements that I have. Thank you for coming. Thank you for just encouraging one another by being here. I, I hope that you sense that encouragement as well. We're dismissed. If you would like to go or need to go, feel free to do that. Uh, if you'd like to stay in fellowship for a little bit, you're more than welcome to do that. If you're able to help us with cleaning, you need to see Rachel who will explain what we're, what we're going to do as soon as we have people out of the building. Thank you for coming this morning.